uh, minimax bounds on stochastic batch convex optimization. And this is joint work with my advisor, John, and my friend, Chohi, who is sitting somewhere in this auditorium. <laughs> and, uh, OK, so we start from motivation. So all of us know stochastic, uh, stochastic gradient descent, which can be written in only one line, like xk plus 1 is equal to xk minus alpha k gk, where gk is an unbiased estimate of the great true gradient. OK, so this is a fully sequential procedure what it means is that in order to compute the later iterates, we have to compute the previous, all the previous iterates. So this, this results into sometimes that when we, need, when we run stochastic gradient descent, it can, be, it, can be slightly, it can be slow because it's fully sequential. However, now we have new techniques. We are in a parallel computing age. So we should somehow use this parallel computing, age, uh, parallel computing technique to speed up this stochastic uh, gradient procedure. So here is what we see from this graph. As we can see, we have uh, in this particular problem, we want to compute nine times of the gradient. And what parallel computing does is that we have three pr processes at each time computing uh, the information that we want. And all we need to do is to compute only for three times. This can somehow save our time to compute. Uh, uh, to compute. So. Uh, uh, and as we can see, uh, this parallel computing has uh, a lot of potentials. And with this motivation in mind, we are going to frame this uh, problem into more general, uh, into a more general setting, which we call it the stochastic batch convex optimization. So what it means is the following. So here we only consider convex optimization, which is the following. We just minimize some convex function f, subject to some constraint where uh, our, our uh, where x lies within a convex set. Okay, all of us knows convex optimization, and the second ingredient that I'm going to introduce is stochastics. So what we adopt here is the stochastic oracle setting that is common in Namirovsky and Reading, in 90, introduced by Namirovsky and Reading in 1983. So this has potential, ah, a lot of uh, application in machine learning. So here, uh, we just record it again. Um, in this setting, we, the optimizer, we will ask the oracles some information that we want, and we make query at some point x, feedable point x. And the oracle uh, gives, uh, gives us back some, uh, the information that we want, plus some noise. So there are two types of oracles that are of interest in machine learning. The first oracle uh, is the zeroth order oracle, where the, where the information that we want, we denote it by ix, is actually the function value at the point x. And the second type of oracle that we are considering is the first order oracle, where the information that we want is the gradient value. But notice here, we, we have some, uh, uh, what we actually get is a noisy version of the information, where there is a Cassi term there, which denotes the noise. OK, now we have introduced the stochastic. The third, part that, so the third ingredient that I'm going to introduce is the batch. So here I'm going to introduce what batch queries means. So say we are going to make queries. Uh, so say we are going to make queries in total n times, and the queries happen in r rounds, r batches. So at each round i, you make n i query points, and we denote it by x1 to x n i. And as we recall the oracle settings that I've just introduced, what we actually get is some noisy information about uh, uh, noisy information, and we denote it by y1 to y n i. So at each uh, it happens in r rounds. And now, what we need to notice is that at each round i, the query points x1 to xn i can actually depend on the past information. So basically, you can adaptively choose the query points based on the information that you get in the past i minus one rounds. And, the out, and the, our overall goal is to find to output some uh, some x hat such that uh, uh, our objective value is uh, as close as close to the minimum as possible. So this is what we call the stochastic batch convex optimization problem. OK, now I'm just uh, trying to uh, give some more motivation why we study this problem. So actually, our work is inspired by the previous work uh, by Parche EDL in, 90, in 2016. Uh, so we, where, the author, where these authors consider a similar problem, uh, is which, which is the batched bandit problems. So the, so the difference here is that uh, our criterion is slightly different. 
where they consider uh, some kind of regret criterion, and our criterion will be uh, the excess gap between fx hat and f star. But we can still borrow the uh, motivation idea in their paper, where they, uh, where, they, uh, uh, where they talk about the clinical trials. In clinical trials, what we want to study is to try to find out some medicines that can actually cure the disease. So in these uh, clinical trials, uh, what we do actually do is that we have, uh, a, uh, we have a lot of phases, which we can also think of as a lot of batches. And we acquire data in, in these batches, just as what we see uh, in the previous. And we will, uh, what we actually want to optimize is to try to find the medicine or the ingredients that can actually help us to, uh, to cure the disease. Okay, so now, after finishing the motivation and the introduction of the problem, now we are going to talk about the actual academic goals that we want to achieve. So, in this talk, let's fix n, the number of budgets, uh, the number of budget size that we have, and the number of round r in ahead of time. And we denote q to be all the possible querying strategies. And we denote x hat to be all the possible estimators that we can, uh, that we can use based on our, our observations. And the goal is to just to understand the optimal strategy here. To define the optimality, what we actually adopt is the following decision theoretic framework that is common in statistics. So given some oracle O, and here the oracle can be either the first order oracle and the zeroth order oracle, and a convex function family F, what we consider is the following minimax risk. The minimax risk uh, that is common uh, in many statistical decision theory. What we actually want to achieve is to actually evaluate the minimax risk. This will help us to identify the optimal strategy. So here, let me introduce the function class that I'm going to uh, talk about in this particular talk. And actually, in our paper, we uh, considered some different function class. So what we consider is the following strongly convex and strongly smooth function class. Uh, essentially, what it says is that the curvature of, the, of, of each function has to be uh, has to be both lower bounded and upper bounded. By, uh, they are lower bounded by lambda and upper bounded by h. These two are the parameters for the function class. OK, here I present the main result. For any, fix for any fixed dimension d and the fixed model parameter lambda and h, we can compute or evaluate the uh, minimax risk uh, up to some uh, constants that are, that are actually dependent on d, lambda, and h. And what's somehow non-trivial here is the exponent that you can see uh, uh, here in, in, in this bounds. And uh, to, better, uh, to better interpret this result, let me just give two important remarks. So the first, the first thing that we want to understand is how these minimax risks actually depend on the dimension d. So as we can see that if we want to achieve the epsilon, epsilon accuracy based on our results, then what the sample size that you actually need is basically exponential in one over epsilon, meaning that it's exponentially bad in the dimension. And the second more interesting remark is the following that I want you to actually take from this, uh, this talk, is that uh, we want to understand how this minimax risk actually depends on the round r. So here, uh, just give some quick, uh, very quick, uh, 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 just give some very quick remark. That is, our result actually implies uh, the following re previous results that uh, compute the fully sequential minimax risk. In the fully sequential minimax risk, what that means is that the number of rounds r is actually equal to the number of sample n, meaning that in each round you just have you are doing fully sequential task, and it's computed and well known. And our major finding is that as long as the number of rounds r is is at least d log log n then you can actually achieve this fully sequential rate. This is due to the following fact and our result that if you plug in R to be d log log n, then our minimax risk as evaluated is uh, up to a constant uh, to the fully sequential minimax risk that we have derived uh, previously. Okay, so d log log n rounds is suffi suffices to achieve the fully sequential rate. Okay. Now I'm just going to give the conclusion. So here, our, we regard our work as a first step toward a deeper understanding between parallelism, information, and stochastic optimization. And our contributions are the following. So first of all, we provide minimax risk bound uh, for a particular function family. And also, we provide some lower bounds for uh, optimizing over Lipschitz convex function class. 
However, we do not have obtained the upper bounds for this uh, matching upper bounds for this function class. And our proof technique, our, our proof techniques is uh, somehow novel. And uh, finally, we leave some open questions here. So uh, there are uh, the first thing is that we want to understand. Uh, we do not understand how many max risk actually depend on the dimension d. As you can see in the previous. Uh, we fix dimension D and we we'll only understand how it depends on the sample size N. And also it might be interesting to understand how the minimax risk actually is for the other function class, say the Lipschitz function class that we consider. And lastly, uh, in our paper, the upper bound is uh, actually slightly uh, impractical because uh, it's somehow like a theoretical product. So what it's actually interesting might be to develop some practically useful procedure for this problem, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe time for a quick question. Uh, okay. Thank. Uh, thank you very much.